Hi all. So um, I talked about this Ertl, um, ooh, uh, Dutch Harder Daytona a while ago, and suffice to say, I was extremely impressed for a model that was made uh, literally exactly 20 years ago. Uh, was this opening hood, opening back um, boot, best underside detail I've ever seen from a model. It's amazing. Now, um, um, I, I do want to get some more Ertl stuff uh, if I can find them for a cheap and I'm also interested in looking into a model kit from the 164 model kit because I've been doing that a lot quite lately if you haven't noticed. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Jesus Christ, no one was happening to me just there. Oh, and uh, you can see uh, in front, uh, back there I've been able to get the uh, display case from um, um, Auto World up and running and this is just something I noticed I've never really thought about before I'll, myself like a lot of you probably would prefer model cars that at 164 that roll and a lot of them don't but suffice to say I still prefer if they roll but I realized something like one advantage that rolling cars that non rolling cars have over rolling cars is that if you put them in a display case don't really roll that much now um, the um, auto art for GT rolls extremely well. The um, mini GT one rolls for the most part, but it, you can see um, not that well. It's definitely the worst rolling mini GT I have. Mini GT usually rolls uh, very amazing, but the uh, the two tarmac works here and the Inno 64. And these are the cars that are so hyper detailed and was an insane amount of tiny little pieces. You don't want them to roll. I feel like especially in a display. You don't want the uh, front splitter or the back spoiler to be hitting any side of the um, display case. I think this might actually be an advantage. I thought about actually doing a whole video on rolling and whatnot, and as well as like how wheels are constructed. I um, feel like it's not going to be worth it, but just thought I'd mention it. You know, I still like it better if it rolls, but as far as displays go, well, I think they're actually a better um, just not rolling. And today I do have another Ertl to show you, but it's not a car, and I mean, you know what it is. You've seen the title of the video. It's... There's Klingons of the Starboard Bell, Starboard Bell, Starboard Bell. There's Klingons of the Starboard Bell, Starboard Bell, Jim. Um, people who don't know Star Trek are probably in you know, like a what the fuck mode right now and people that know Star Trek half of you guys loved it what I just did half of you are probably organizing an orbital strike from the uh, Cardassians and the Romulans uh, but that was you know what the fuck was that well that was the uh, Star Trek game across the universe okay last time I'm gonna do that so it's, it's a great song it's super catchy it's silly extremely silly uh, but yeah, this is the, um, oh, I want to say original Enterprise, it's not, and I'll get to in a second. This is the Enterprise A, USS Enterprise NCC-1701-A, dash dash and this is a backing card. I usually just throw them away right away, but it's fun to just look at it. Star Trek V, The Final Frontier, um, number 1372, and let's see what it says here. Cut and collect replica cards. I don't even know what that means. It's uh, I have no idea. USS Enterprise to boldly go where no one has gone before. It's no one now uh, after uh, Star Trek VI as well as the TNG TV series. You know, there's people complaining about um, Discovery as well as Star Trek Picard. It's like, oh, it's so SJW. It's so feminist, whatever. I mean, I st I still maintain these two are terrible shows, but. That's not the problem. It's it's people pretending to be progressive, and because progressive pays. But like, um, I, I'm not I'm not that familiar with um, with Enterprise. I'm not that familiar with Discovery. But God, Picard is like the worst at being feminist. You know, like if you look at it, like every woman, every female character is like a psycho in that in that TV show, and it's like, oh, this is a pro. Uh, pro refugees, pro immigration, and like, uh, what's his face? Patrick Stewart actually had the audacity to say it's all about Brexit and whatever. And you realize all the Romulan refugee are actually plotting a secret scheme. Like, 
for the people that believe um, refugees are all terrorists, like the AFD could not could not make a show that caters to their opinion um, better than Star Trek Picard. It's disgusting. Um, but being SJW is not a problem because, well, guess what? Star Trek has always been SJW. Star Trek has always been progressive, you know, like the interracial kiss between Uhura and Kirk. It's not literally the first ever on TV, but it's the first big one that people actually watch. In TNG, they dealt with um, transgender. Um, a bit of a controversial ending, but like for the time it was made, like think about it. As well as in th season three of um, the original series, let that be your last battlefield was racism and such. And uh, DS9, there's a few hints at homosexuality, um, could have done more than that, but like, dude, if you don't like uh, SJW, if you don't like progressivism, you're not a Star Trek fan. Like, I'm not one of those gatekeepers who like, dude, like, Star Trek has always been left wing. Other than the weird uh, TOS episode where um, Kirk and Spock fight space communists, um, if Gene Roddenberry lived through the era of McCarthyism, he would have been blacklisted. He would have been among the uh, Hollywood ten. He's not a, the nicest guy I know, but like all of the stuff he expresses in uh, Star Trek are pretty damn left wing. In Star Trek Four, uh, Kirk literally says there is no money in the future. It's fully functioning space communism, and you know, like if you're a right wing quote unquote f fan of Star Trek, why? Anyway, uh, back to the card. This now famous phrase captured the imagination of millions when Star Trek first aired on network television in 1966. Oh, I forgot to turn off the AC. Give me one second. Hasn't made a sound for so long I thought it actually turned off. Um, since then, Star Trek has had an ever-increasing number of followers even after the final episode of the original s series on June 3, uh, June 3rd, 1969, the number of Star Trek fans continued to grow, but we don't really want to talk about the last episode of the original series, do we? That one is the, uh, the Roundabout Intruder, something like that. Oh, talking about TOS and, fem and uh, issues of feminism. Yeah, that's, that, that episode did not age well. You can complain all about of the uh, finale. You can compare... Uh, you can complain about uh, Endgame all you want. You can complain about um, the, the finale for um, Enterprise all you want. And I myself is not the biggest fan of what what you left behind. Uh, it's not as bad as this episode. Oh my god, the TOS ending was god awful. Um, I mean, they did continue the uh, original cruise adventures in the... Um, the animated series, which I don't even remember what the last episode is. I mean, I think the penultimate episode is uh, Sharper Than a Serpent's Fang, right? The one about uh, Aztec God and Parenting, which is weird, but it's really, it's a, it's a great episode. I love the animated series if you haven't seen it. It's only two seasons of it, second season is like, what, three episodes, four episodes? Uh, it doesn't take long, it is fascinating and being animated, it has all the liberty it wants with like special effects and all that. It's worth watching. There is um, who the Lorelai call or something. There's one episode where uh, Uhura actually gets to captain, actually gets the uh, gets to command the Enterprise, which is fun. The episode itself isn't great, but uh, it's a fun moment to have. Um, yeah. Yeah, good stuff. The original TV series currently in syndication in the U.S. and other countries was a flagship for many movies, such as the newest movie release, um, the original series movies, TOS movies, some of the best Star Trek movies ever released. Star Trek The Final Front... Oh. Star Trek The Final Frontier. Um, definitely the weakest of the uh, original six original Star Trek movies. Um, it, I, I'm fond of it. I mean, it's definitely the weakest, it's the worst if you want to put it that way, it's the least best, but it's got redeeming qualities, uh, William Shatner's kind of, uh, um, what you would call it, vanity piece, but it's fun, it's interesting, I like the idea of Klingons and the Federation and Romulans all bunching up together, it's a nice, it's a, it's got a nice, um, tale about religion and 
cult. But um, at the end of the day, it's over the head. It hits you over the head with its anti-religion themes, and I'm atheist as fuck. But um, it's still, it's not subtle, you know. A lot of the times, there's movies and shows. Yeah, I, I I agree with you, but a little subtlety won't hurt. Um, but yeah, it's it's uh. It's got redeeming qualities, and the uh, camping trip at the beginning, it's a lot of fun, I think. Um, my favorite, yeah. All the TOS movies are pretty good. I know a lot of people hate the, uh, uh, the, the motion picture, but, yeah, I don't. I mean, it's not the greatest thing ever made, and sure, it's boring, but, man, it just looks so amazing, like, all the map painting in the background, like, you go to San Francisco and see Starfleet headquarters. Man, I, I can't, I can't see anyone being a Star Trek fan and hating that, and sure, it's not a exciting action movie. I think the Klingons fired at V'ger a couple of times, and, um, the Enterprise fired one, a couple, one proton torpedo, a couple por proton torpedoes, proton fucking hell it's Star Wars right uh, a couple of photon torpedoes at a, an asteroid that was literally all they did right but Star Trek was I'm never really that focused on action so I don't care um, Wrath of Khan of course it's classic but it's more actiony and I don't remember much of it honestly I mean it's a great movie for sure Search for Spock is okay um, it's kind of middle of the road not bad not great in my opinion, might be well. I don't know. Uh, Search for Spot has one of my favorite moments, so uh, that really embodies Star Trek. It's when uh, Kirk was fighting that Klingon who killed his son. Shit, spoilers. Uh, David Marcus and he uh, hits the Klingon who falls, like who's hanging by a cliff. First reaction Kirk does, he held his hand and wanted to save him his enemy this embodies star trek so much and it's been something in star trek since i don't know probably season two uh the arena where he fights the gorn like that's what star trek is supposed to be about it's not just like mindlessly killing people which all of these stupid tng movies and um uh subsequent tv shows like again going back to um Ooh, uh, Discovery and Picard are so pew, 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 pew. It's like, fuck off. It's not what Star Trek is about. And, and granted, Kirk at that time probably didn't know that he is a Klingon that killed David Marcus, but he's one of them. And his first reaction, he held out his hand and tried to save him. That's what Star Trek is about. Anyway, uh, back on Earth. Um, um, actually, uh, Star Trek for the... Uh, Voyage Home, lovely, lovely, lovely film. I love it so much. Um, and Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country. It's a great movie about Cold War, although um, you don't know your history. America is n not nearly as good as the Federation. And Soviet Union, you could probably compare them to a Klingons, but um, Cold War America pretty comparable to the Klingons as well but still it's a great movie about looking for peace and letting go of your hatred and um, William Shatner famously uh, did not want Kirk to be so antagonistic to a peace and I think he got it right in this case I think was it written and directed by directed by um, Leonard Nimoy maybe I'm, I'm not perfectly sure um, and I 100% agree with him I, I I don't know, like Star Trek with Kirk, especially when, he, again, like trying to save the Klingon who killed his son. It's like, he, I don't see him saying, like, let him die, or however he put it. I agree with him in that instance. I, William Shatner understands his character way better than Patrick Stewart. That's not even a question. Anyway, uh, back on Earth, Star Trek followers have emerged as strong as ever with the continued enthusiasm <laughs> it says that uh, euphemism enthusiasm in the star trek legacy Ertl is proud to release the star trek uss enterprise mini diecast replica that will let you rel relive relive past episodes or create your own new adventures yeah this came out um 1989 damn that's uh well tmm we don't know about that that's when the, the malafall when the berlin wall fell on uh, november 9th I guess Star Trek 
5 came out that year too. Um, but yeah. It's so great. I mean, this is not the original model, obviously. I honestly wish it can be the original TOS TV show um, Enterprise, the original Constitution class. I completely understand why they change it up, obviously. Um, so the original one's more uh, cylindrical. The um, the pylons are actually perpendicular to the main fuselage itself. It's a lot more simplistic, and I mean, like the budget wasn't insane, so um, the model was a bit more simplistic, and I completely understand why they. Um, Change it up for the movies, uh, so it became like the uh, Enterprise refit. They did the same with the D7 battle cruiser as well. Did a bit more greebling and um, change it into the Katinga. But this is a good-looking ship as well. I prefer, I don't know, like the original original Enterprise. It just more embodies the era and the kind of budget that Star Trek worked with as well as like just sci-fi in general from that era it's simplistic I like this as well I, I like the original better than this I like this better than um, the JJ Abrams one and I don't even want to talk about the one from Discovery um yeah it sounds nice it's the uh, and this is not just a refit either this is an, uh, this is Enterprise A so this was after um, the uh, original refit Enterprise got destroyed at the beginning of Star Trek 3 the search for Spock this is the one that he got uh, Kirk and his crew got at the end of Star Trek 4 the voyage home so um, yeah great looking ship all of this main body is die cast from the saucer section engineering section all die cast metal but uh, these two are pylons as well as the warp nacelles are plastic lovely um, so uh, you can probably notice on camera that the uh, pylons and the um, warp nacelles look a bit different color which is unfortunate but most of the time you won't really notice and it just makes them a lot stronger because you know the connection point in here is not super thick comes with a display stand in the shape of the uh, uh, original Starfleet insignia looks pretty nice uh, uh, and the, on the underside you can see I don't know what PPC means but it's uh, oh Paramount right because uh, that's what the movie who made the movies it says Ertl uh, Dyersville Iowa USA made in China uh, you can see the two rivets right here and it's some kind of production code right here 2769 zero I presume that is uh, the two rivets as well as this hole is for the display stand um, and this is weird because you would expect the uh, the uh, Starfleet insignia to be facing forward right but it's not it's facing backwards because you can see uh, it's not a flat surface I mean it's flat but it's not a um, horizontal so this is how you do it is the best way I've found still looks really good but the stand just makes it a bit weird um so it's honestly at the end of the day it's a really cool model i'm glad to have it and uh pair it up what's the eagle mouse one honestly scale wise obviously uh that the uh, original enterprise should be still quite a bit smaller than the uh, galaxy class but uh not too bad and if you put it next to um uh, oh it's too bright johnny lightning's d7 battlecruiser romulan battlecruiser Oh, uh, the um, uh, in this case the um, uh, it's again a little bit bigger than it's supposed to because um, uh, uh, these two are supposed to be um, more or less equally matched, especially if you see uh, Star Trek VI, the undiscovered country, when uh, Kronos One, yeah, Kronos One met up with the Enterprise, they're roughly the same size, so um, and you know just look at the difference in the size of the uh, nacelles, which should be. I mean, more closer in size than this. Obviously, they're made by completely different companies, and even from the same companies, they're not at the same scale either, but it's pretty cool. And the biggest problem you're going to have is that um, they're not going to be on different planes, so it might look a bit weird, but you know that's what space is supposed to be, right? It's 3D, and I think it uh, might even be better to like purposely slant it a little, so it just makes, makes it look more 3D. 
I mean, I know I'm making like a joint human Klingon slash Romulan fleet, so just imagine this is part of the, um, um, ooh, part of the Dominion War. And uh, one thing I will give to Star Trek Discovery is that for the first time in Star Trek, they actually had a, had scenes where um, ships will meet up at different angles. Uh, so that's pretty nice. It shows you, um, you know, space is 3D. Not every ship is parallel to one another. That makes sense. Unlike Star Trek Picard, where um, the entire Federation fleet uses one single ship design, and the, the entire Romulan fleet uses one single ship design. Like, wow. I mean, even in Dominion War, you see, like, like 50 different ship classes. I mean, you see... Uh, you see the Nebula class, you see the Galaxy class, you see the Miranda, you see um, those fighters that got blown up in seconds. There's Roundabouts, there's the Defiant class, there's um, uh, Akira class, and the USS Grissom class, which ship design I love, but I can never remember the name to. Uh, oh, it's the Excelsior class. How could I forgot the Excelsior class? Like, and that's what a fleet is supposed to be, you know, different ships have different roles to play in a fleet. You know, uh, anyway, I'm not here to complain about the new stuff. I'm only 23. I'm not supposed to be able to get off my long age that complains about everything new yet, but it sucks. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. I know it's a lot of talk. It's uh, more than 20 minutes just talking about Star Trek. But I mean, I love Star Trek. I would take any uh, excuse I can, I can find to talk more about Star Trek. But this has been the Ertl USS Enterprise A for Star Trek V The Final Frontier. Well, that's it for the video. Peace and long life, my friends.